And here we go. Hey guys, welcome back to another Psycroft episode. So we started episode on the copy of the survival server. Just wanted to show you guys what it would look like if you would blow up the whole main storage. So obviously, last episode was an April Fools. Uh, main storage is still attacked. Now I'm on the actual survival server. Everything was just there yeah, in April Fools. I'm also glad that most of you probably got it. That it was an April Fools episode. It's always a bit dangerous to actually make one. Uh, for example, Doc M told us a story. He made an April Fools once where he basically claimed that he's gonna stop his YouTube career and do something else instead. And a lot of people unsubscribed. I'm always afraid if I'm gonna do an April Fools that a lot of people will stop watching my video because they, they think it's real. <laughs> so we won't have a shopping district to exchange items. People won't have bases. I mean, they still can build their bases if they want to. Nobody stops them. But yeah, all of those radical changes. Uh, I was talking about last episode. It was just part of the April Fools. But not everything was fake. We actually built all the little shops and the bases on the survival server and also won't remove them afterwards. So we built a shopping district here in a remote, remote location about 3000 blocks away from spawn. Uh, it's just a plain spawn. I don't think we will ever use this area of anything. So I don't think this will be in the way of any project at any point. But yeah, we can always come here and remember the April Fool's episode we did once. But obviously none of the shops will be used to exchange any items. We will continue like before, cooperate on the projects and yeah, share all the resources. Now let's continue with our gold farm project. So the farm yeah, itself is working fine, it was built up uh, in the previous episode. But the crafting system specifically needs an upgrade. So we spent way too many hours here tediously crafting all of the nuggets into ingots and then the ingots into blocks. You can see what we actually got. It's quite a decent amount by now. We got one double chest full of shulker boxes of gold blocks and 20 more shulker boxes. So this is definitely gonna be a nice, but we still wanna get more. Um, it's gonna be nice if we already have some gold for 1.16 because it might take a while until we have a proper gold for 1.16 and we can already maybe trade some of the, the gold here into our barter uh, that into the other type of blocks, for example a blackstone or quartz. So it would be nice if we have some kind of head start so we can already do some bartering before we have a gold farm in 1.16. I think this farm here might be broken with the shifting floors, but we'll have to see as well. I think it might just be not as efficient anymore. Yeah, but let's work on that crafting system. So the idea, instead of um, yeah, taking the out items out of the shulker box yourself, uh, we want to use droppers instead. So we still want to put all the nuggets into shulker boxes in the nether dimension, and then uh, we store them in the nether and after a couple of days of running the gold farm, everything should be brought over to the overworld uh, and then put into shulker box unloaders that would feed droppers that would put the items into a water stream. The water stream makes everything a lot easier. That's why I want to build this in the overworld. So yeah, some extra effort to transfer the items from the nether to the overworld, but I think it's just way easier uh, overall to do it like this. Okay, so then we have a lot of droppers putting items in the water streams, all gets sent to the player and we would just stand there in front of a crafting table, craft everything into uh, ingots, throw it on the ground, and a second player would pick it up and craft it into gold blocks, throw those on the ground as well, and then it's going to be put into shulker box fillers. 
So this would be the plan. Um, I was thinking we can go really large scale. So we already have a quite large crafting system at the main storage for all kinds of items. But the one I have in mind for this type of application will be just ridiculous. So it will be probably 20 times faster than the one we have at the main storage. Um, I think we, I want to go for about eight to nine million uh, nuggets crafted into ingots. So quite an insane amount. We will probably need around 1,000 shulker box unloaders and 1,000 droppers to supply the, yeah, the play with all of those items. Gonna be insane. All right, now we're on the creative server. First thing to do is check if this whole project is even feasible. So we need to check if all of those items um, in the water streams and to a certain extent also all the hoppers around and the redstone we need to power the droppers would lag the server. Because if the server is just getting lagged by the storage, then we just need to downsize this because there's no point making it larger. All right, so here we have, um, I think, 540 droppers that will be powered every four ticks and will dispense 10.8 million items per hour. Got water streams below, everything is flushed towards the player in the middle. And I basically just want to check um, if the crafting. Um, can keep up with the speed of the items and additionally if it's gonna lag Okay, so let's see first thing we want to check is the MSPT. This should definitely not exceed 50 and We're at 35 so it's looking good. Okay now I'm in creative mode. I'm gonna yeah, it's definitely horrible for a client as expected, but that's okay So I'm just gonna check if we can keep up crafting those items um, okay, it's a bit of an issue right now. Let's maybe stop this real quick and try again. So I'm gonna turn it on again and this time we try to keep up the items first from the beginning. Okay, so we're using carpet client and control Q crafting. Craft the nuggets into ingots as soon as they arrive and I can even keep up doing it manually. Obviously in order to not ruin my fingers, I uh, will use some auto hotkey script to automate it. But it seems like we can keep up. There's some ghost items also. <laughs> uh, for the client, sometimes here the stack size was over 64. There's just some ghost items going here. But it seems like it's feasible to actually keep up with the speed here. It's pretty insane. Okay. Let's stop it again. So, yeah. 10.8 million items. Our seems to be possible. Should probably also be a bit away from all of the droppers. Items themselves aren't really that bad for the client. But probably all of the redstone here is, is pretty bad. Okay, um, so yeah, I think this size is feasible. Uh, now we need to put in all of the yeah redstone in order to distribute the items, unload shulker boxes and all of that stuff. Next we need a shulker box unloader. I think I've shown this one already. It was shown to me by Oreo once. I think this is pretty much the best design. It's really reliable, compact, and there's really no downsides to it. I'm just gonna build it up real quick. You can also adjust it to make it tileable. I just wanna show this nice design again. So like this. And we need um, yeah, another piston here in order to update the, the piston. So we power the dispenser here and QC power the piston at the same time. The dispenser has four ticks of cooldown, so that's why the, the piston would extend and retract uh, before the uh, dispenser would fire. Okay, um, I already prepared box already. So we can put it in here, and here's another one. So here, the items would go into the hopper below. And as soon as it's empty, get an update here, power the dispenser again, and break the box. Because the hopper actually is on a cooldown, so it basically just uh, took an item out of the shulker box. Uh, it can't pick up the empty shulker box immediately. So everything is so quick that the shulker box item is just pushed over by the piston here and is pu uh, picked up by the hopper on this side. Okay, so that's the whole system. We need this a couple hundred times. So next problem is distributing all the items. So that Easiest way would be to have a water stream here on the side and then just flush it over, hoppers would pick it up, but then we have a problem. 
Uh, first, you would fill up this dispenser and the hopper, and then the next one. And in case um, we only have a small batch they want to craft into gold blocks, then we would not use the full system because all the items are stuck uh, in the initial part of the storage. So it's not equally distributed. So ideally, we want to make a system where the items are may flushed on the side here. And the first module picks up exactly one item. Then, yeah, the second module also picks up an item. And once every of those modules received one Schalke box, we would clear it. And then we send another batch. So basically, yeah, equally distribute all the items as much as possible. So I think that's where we need some kind of smart solution to do this. So we could overcomplicate this, but I think the easy solution would be something like this. So we have hoppers that point to the side Four slots are already filled with some kind of item, and then there's only one slot left that could be filled up. So if you would put in some boxes in here, so I'm just yeah, running everything over, every of those hoppers would take out exactly one item, and then the rest um, yeah, would end up here in the back. Then in order to exactly take out the first item, we could just send a chest minecart um, over another set of hoppers, well, what's going to happen is the hopper would instantly transfer the box into the chest minecart, and then the hopper below would instantly take it out of the chest minecart. So each of those hoppers will basically contain one item afterwards. Okay, so yeah, we can use the system here. Doesn't really need any redstone for most of the part. Um, there's just one problem. Uh, yeah, at some point there will be a lot of it items trickling through the system, and if you would still have yeah items go through it while the chess card takes out the items, you would have an issue. But if you would split it up into like two lines, um, where we first basically send all the items over one of the lines, and then once everything is completely filled up, we clear it, and then redirect the items to fill up the second um, line, for example. So we would basically split it up in two parts and always alternate uh, between clearing one of the parts and filling up the other part. So this way, yeah, I think we could make a quite simple system in order to distribute the items equally. And a lot of hours later, I combined all of the ideas into a working system. So this will be our big crafting system. In total, I uh, yeah, settled for 960 Schalke box unloaders, so we will get 8.6 million items per hour. Okay, so here in the back we need a little bit of redstone, because I was talking about this issue with um, yeah, one line filling up while the chest minecart uh, were cleared, so we want to avoid that. Uh, we have basically four sections that are stacked on top of each other. It's on top of each other because I think it's quite easy if all the items here could just fall down in the middle. They fall down here, but a player would pick them up. So we got a little crafting station. Okay, so I can yeah, just show it how it works. So I'm just gonna add um, a lot of Schalke boxes here on the side and fill up some of the modules. All right, so I started the Schalke box distribution and here it just happened. Um, the first big subsection is filled up, and now, um, yeah, instead of going into this water stream, the items will just fall through um, the water here. This trapdoor opened, and they would go into the next big subsection. So the chest my card it clears everything. It was also sent on its way already. So all of the hoppers here will be emptied, and then yeah, the items are distributed to the Schalker box unloaders. Okay, so there's still some Schalker boxes in there. They would also go to the yes, second big subsection at the same time. And once everything here at the bottom is also filled up, then the same will happen. So basically just take an output out of the very last hopper. If this is completely filled up, then we will send a signal. Uh, they would switch between distribution modes. Instead of falling through the water, the trap will close, and then we fill up the first bigger section again. Okay, um, guess I'll just let this run for a while until we have uh, one yeah, item in each of the hoppers. Uh, I have some just some dummy items here in the back to fill up the other slots. 
technically, in order to make it a bit simpler, we could also just fill those up. But uh, yeah, I think it's fine this way. Okay, now they make the way down. Um, yeah, I'll just wait until everything is filled up and then uh, I can turn on all the droppers. All right, at this point, each of the dispensers here has received one Shulker box. We need to trigger them the first time. In order to do so, I just have a redstone line uh, going above. They will be just activated by a single button push. So every time you want to use the crafting system, you have to press the button once to get that first Shulker box out of the system. You could even automate it if you really wanted to, but this would make everything just more complicated. And since we have to build this a couple hundred times, it's a lot easier yeah, to just have a redstone line and press a button once then to spend so much more time trying to automate this as well. Okay, yeah, let's actually try out the whole system. So I'm gonna press the button. There we go, all of the dispensers just fired. Check it out, yeah, there's plenty of shulker boxes now. The nuggets would fill up all of the droppers here. And then there's, um, I squeezed in just a line of observer space here on the top. They will then trigger all of the droppers um, every four ticks. So the droppers are filled by hoppers on both sides. Just they are the perfect speed to trigger it this fast. Okay, so let's try it out. So we press the button. Now we have a lever here to trigger all of the droppers. Just gonna go in um, survival mode real quick. So it's a realistic and great if you just pick up everything. And then we can yeah, test this out. Okay, let's get ready. It's gonna be insanely fast. Okay, so this is basically the type of speed we need to deal with here. It's nuts. I mean, if I just don't craft for a second, check out how fast the inventory fills up. Bam, that's <laughs> 2000 items. In a second or so. Yep, it's pretty crazy. But you can keep up with the speed here. The moment we just destroy all of the ingots, but it will basically be the second player directly below, picks up everything and crafts into gold blocks. Okay, this is nuts. <laughs> all right, I put in the last pieces. So this is ready to be built in survival. The only thing is really missing is now um, we had to hook this up directly to the nether. We're just gonna do that on site and decide how to do it. But yeah, what I added was the Shulker box filler for the gold blocks. So we got 13 Shulker box fillers. And we will get a lot of empty Shulker boxes in the end from the gold crafting system. That's why we got this temporary storage here that can hold yeah, 25 million items worth of empty Shulker boxes. Should be enough. There will also be like a system here at the bottom to dispense all of the boxes. And yeah, most of them will already stack up. Um, yeah, still need to decide how to do it exactly. So it probably will be some kind of pressure plate um, that would basically stop the items. Something like this is a pressure plate. And then the front um, trapdoor. Once the first item goes over, it closes and so everything in the back stacks up and basically just to make batches. So like every 20 seconds we send another batch to the nether dimension again. That's the basic idea here. All right, yeah, so let's build this in survival. One more thing, I actually replaced all the concrete gold blocks. So we're gonna build the gold crafting system out of gold blocks. It's just fitting and we have enough anyway by now. And we're back in survival. The crafting system has been built up. I wanted to make a time lapse of this, but I forgot to drag the replay mod into the Minecraft mods folder, so I ended up with empty hands. Don't have a replay file, so yeah, missed opportunity here for a time lapse. Um, so it took us four hours to build the whole thing. I was streaming it. Also had a lot of help. Um, on top of my head, the people helped the most were Miles, Helga, Enemy's Friend, Jorge, Herb, and Sky Rising. I think two or three more helped a little bit as well. Yeah, so four hours was <laughs> definitely a lot of work. I was pretty exhausted afterwards. There's one change I decided to do. So all of those hoppers that point to the side here and create if I put in four items, um, I decided to keep empty. So this has one disadvantage, but also a couple advantages. So the disadvantage obviously is um, you need to put in five Schalke boxes um, yeah, in order to get this to work. 
So we would need to yeah, invest uh, about 6 million gold nuggets until all of them would be filled up. Um, but the advantages would be that in case something goes wrong or whatever, it couldn't happen that we somehow take out a dummy item by accident. So we can only really take out the shulker boxes. Uh, another advantage is we could easily empty the whole system without compromising the functionality and use it for a different type of item. So we have 100 million eyes that in higher versions we could craft into packed eyes and blue eyes. We could use the same system for that, we just need to bring everything over. And yeah, if we don't have any dummy items in there or other items, uh, we can just yeah basically run the minecarts in order to empty all of those hoppers. And then we could use it for different type of items. So that's my decision here. Unfortunately, I can't really demonstrate it right now in survival. We actually need to farm a little bit more gold first. And I still need to hook this up to the nether side and so on. So, and I want to get the episode out today. So yeah, we're going to stop right here. Beginning of the next episode, hopefully we have the gold farm running for a while. So we can demonstrate the whole system. And then we can also work on something else that I was planning for quite a while now. Okay. So this is it for today. Thanks guys for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.